Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an equation for real solutions. Now, we have x squared minus y squared equals the quantity x plus y squared. And we're going to be looking for x and y values. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution. And then I'll also show you a graph of what is going on. So there's a couple of ways to go about it. Let's go ahead and talk about the first method first. And I'll just indicate what you could do with the second method. I'm, I'm probably not going to finish it. Anyways, the first method looks like this. We can go ahead and put everything on the same side. So kind of like maybe write it x squared minus y squared and then subtract x plus y quantity squared and set it equal to zero. That's a good thing when you can set an equation equal to zero. That way, hopefully you can factor one side and go uh, for the solutions that way. Uh, a lot of times that's what we try to do. x squared minus y squared is a difference of two squares and it can be factored as x plus y times x minus y. And then x plus y squared is just x plus y times x plus y. So you can kind of write it like that if you want. Now, we did get a common factor, which is x plus y. Great. So let's go ahead and take it out. This is called factoring by greatest common factor. And then inside, we have the right terms such that when we distribute and multiply by x plus y, we should get the original expression, which is this one in this case. So inside, I have to have x minus y minus, since I have the x plus y on the outside, I just need to write x plus y, but that needs to be in parentheses because it's going to be negated. There's a minus sign here, okay? By the way, these two minus signs are the same. <laughs> one of them is longer, but same idea. So x plus y, and then here what happens? x minus x is 0, and negative y time, negative y minus y is negative 2y. So let's go ahead and write it that way. And now, negative 2 doesn't matter. You can basically divide both sides by negative 2, and nothing would change. So it looks like y times x plus y equals 0. Don't expect to get something like y in terms of x all the time. Uh, this is just going to give us a bunch of solutions, or a family of solutions. A family. Okay. So, one of the solutions is y equals 0. What is that supposed to mean? It means any point on the x-axis is a solution. So like 3 comma 0, 2 comma 0. Since we're looking for two numbers x comma y, we have to write the answers or solutions as ordered pairs. Uh, negative 5 root 7 comma 0, 1 million comma 0, whatever, so on and so forth. As long as the y coordinate is 0, 0 comma 0 too, obviously. But anything that has a 0 y coordinate. The second piece gives us something different. x plus y equals 0, and that means y equals negative x. So anything on the x-axis and anything on the line y equals negative x. And that is going to be the diagonal but uh, not the main one, the other one. And we'll look at the graph so you'll have a better idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so what is another way to approach this problem? I was just thinking about a second method, but probably uh, we will not complete it because you, you guys can do the rest, right? Hopefully. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I don't know if it's going to work. I haven't even tried it, so I'm going to try it for the first time. Let's go ahead and expand everything on the right-hand side. x squared plus... 2xy plus y squared. And I was hoping to cancel something out. Looks like x squared can be canceled out. Great. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out. And then put y squared on the right-hand side. So I get 2xy plus y squared plus y squared 2y squared equals 0. And then from here, dividing both sides by 2 or factoring out 2y, we get x plus y equals 0. And again, it turns out to be the same thing. So the solutions are going to be the same. I was hoping to get something like a quadratic in x or quadratic in y, something that I can write, but it's probably going to come up if I, you know, uh, phrase the problem a little different, like if I said, hey, how about solving something like x squared minus y squared equals x plus, um, so 3x squared minus y squared equals x plus y squared. And then you could just go about turning this into a quadratic and finding y in terms of x and so on and so forth. Anyways, that's just another approach to the problem and here's the graph of what is going on. Remember we got y equals 0. By the way, why did I have to graph this separately? Because Desmos did not give me as solutions 
the points on the x-axis. I do not know why it doesn't show me the x-axis. It should normally, but anyways, uh, that's why I had to separately do it. But another solution is y equals negative x. As you can see, this line is y equals negative x, and this one is y equals 0, which is the x-axis. And those are going to be all the solutions. Any point on those lines is going to be a solution. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. You can basically replace x with anything you want, and then you'll get a y, such as 5 comma negative 5, right? Because if x, uh, x and y are opposite, right? Y is just going to be the opposite. Or uh, you can get, you know, 10 to the power 6 comma 0 as another solution. There are infinitely many of those. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.